Greetings everybody and once again welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to talk about Apache Spark Connect and how you guys can get started with a small lab. Uh, so this is pretty popular. Uh, I just want to make sure I, I cover this. I also wrote an article on LinkedIn about unleashing the power of Apache Spark uh, everywhere with Spark Connect. Again you can come and read uh, more about Spark Connect over here. So first of all, let's understand, wait, wait, what is Spark Connect, right? So the best way to learn anything would be to refer the official documentation and let's read uh, a couple of things uh, together, okay? So I am on the official website of Apache Spark uh, over here and I'm gonna read this definition over here. Spark Connect over you, right? In Apache Spark, in Apache Spark 3.4, Spark Connect introduced a decoupled client server architecture that allows remote connectivity to the Spark cluster using data frame API and unresolved logical plan as, uh, as the protocol. The separation between the client and the server allows Spark and its open ecosystem to be leveraged from everywhere. It can be embedded into modern data application in IDEs, notebooks, and programming languages. So this image, uh, you know, says everything about uh, Spark Connect, right? You can have your Jupyter Notebook, IDEs, your modern data applications, any languages, Go, R, Python, you can connect to Spark using Spark Connect, right? Now, definitely you can go and read more about how Apache Spark Connect worked, but in summary, it works on the gRPC framework. Now, I do want to talk about uh, the advantages that it brings uh, by using Spark Connect. So I want to share my screen. Again, uh, the, the one that I want to discuss would be uh, this one right here. Again, it offers uh, three uh, operational benefits. The one that I want to focus is the stability part, which this is very, very um, uh, amazing actually. Application that uses too much memory will now only impact their own environments as they can run in their own processes. User can define their own dependencies on the client and do not need to worry about any potential conflicts with the Spark driver. All right, so now that you have, uh, you know, um, we have read some couple of definition about Spark Connect, we read some advantages. Now let's do a simple hello world, how exactly it works, right? That's exactly what we want to see. So I'm going to share my screen and now we can begin with a small hello world lab. So the first step is we need the Spark 3.4.2. So I can basically show you. Uh, you can head over to the official Spark website and on the drop down, select the version 3.4.2. Okay, and then you can click on this particular link. This will give you um, a URL. Simply click on the URL and uh, you know, a GZ file would be downloaded on your computer. I've already done that. So I just want to show you that process. Uh, if I go here, I have a folder called spark-3.4.2-bin-hadoop3, uh, hyphen hyphen bin hyphen Hadoop 3, right? So we're going to cd into that, okay? Okay, now we wanna you know start the Spark Connect, right? So the way we can do that is by following command. Uh, inside the folder SBIN, we're gonna be launching the file start connect server.shell, and then we're gonna provide this particular package org.apache.spark spark hyphen connect 2.12 colon 3.4.2 because I'm using Spark 3.4.2, right? So copy this, head over to your terminal. Again, this is my directory, right? If I do PWD, hopefully makes sense. Now I'm gonna run this. And as you can see, now my um, Spark Connect server has started, right? Now that it, it has started, now you can connect to it and you can start running your, you know, normal PySpark commands, right, if needed. So let me show you. Um, so again, back to my terminal over here. Again, uh, you can now connect using um, following syntax, you can say, hyphen, you know, here I'm simply connecting to the to, to the Spark Connect using sc colon slash slash localhost, right? So if I do that, if I, right, it will launch my PySpark terminal and you know, here I can launch my simple hello world application, right? Can do that. And of course you will see the data frame object. Now you can also connect there in the Python code as well. So let me show you that particular tab. Uh, so over here, so let me go, let me actually uh, expand this. 
So here, right, same code, right? We're using uh, from PySpark, we import the Spark session. Now see how we are connecting, right? Spark session dot builder dot remote. And then we are providing sc colon slash slash localhost. So again, we are connecting to that. And then again, I'm executing my normal uh, PySpark code, right? So from here, ls, uh, and I can do python demo.py. And again, I should see my uh, small mini PySpark data frame object on the console again. And uh, sure enough, you can see the, the, the output on the console, right? Hopefully made sense. Um, so now that's it for the particular video. I just wanted to give you an introduction about Spark Connect. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll leave the LinkedIn blog post in the description section below where you will find more resources that you can go and read. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.